All right, let's dive right in to some seriously fascinating UFO sightings. Sounds good to me. These cases are going to make you think twice about what's really out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the stories we're about to unpack, they touch on the stuff of legends, you know? Exactly. We've got military encounters, mysterious lights in the sky, even a bizarre creature sighting. Yeah, it's a real mixed bag, but they all point to this idea that there might be more going on than meets the eye. Okay, so let's set the stage for our first case. The Tehran UFO incident, 1976. All right. Picture this. It's a September night in Tehran, Iran. People are starting to report these strange lights in the sky. Multiple nights. Oh, yeah. Multiple nights. At first, the authorities, they don't think much of it. Typical, right. People see something unusual and it's just dismissed as nothing. But these sightings, they just keep coming. And they escalate. It's not just random folks seeing things anymore. Right. And that's when the Iranian Air Force decides to get involved. They scramble jets. I mean, that's when you know things are getting serious. Now, these pilots, they're trained observers. The best of the best when it comes to identifying stuff in the sky, right? And what they see, it blows their minds. They report a bright flashing object that's moving in ways no known aircraft could. We're not talking about some blurry dot in the distance. They're describing a structured craft. Yeah, something with defined shape and, and it's performing these incredible maneuvers. It's almost like it's toying with them, showing off what it can do. And one of the pilots, General Parviz Jafari, he has this really unsettling experience. Oh yeah, this is where it gets wild. Jafari's flying an F-4 Phantom top of the line jet. As he gets closer to this UFO, his instruments start going haywire. Communications down, radar glitching. It's like this thing is messing with his plane systems. It's not just a visual sighting anymore. Now it's interfering with our technology. It makes you wonder, right? What kind of tech could do that? And get this. During the final sighting, as this UFO is hovering over Tehran, the entire city's power grid goes down. A citywide blackout. You can't just chalk that up to coincidence. The timing is just too perfect. The Iranian Air Force, they conduct this full-blown investigation, interviews, radar data, the whole nine yards. And their conclusion, it wasn't a weather balloon, it wasn't a satellite, it wasn't any kind of known aircraft. It was a genuine, unidentified flying object. An actual UFO with capabilities beyond anything we understand. And that leaves us with a pretty big question. What could cause a citywide power outage like that? Was it intentional on the part of this UFO? A show of force. Or maybe it was just a side effect of some super advanced tech that we can't even fathom. That's a chilling thought. Imagine the kind of power we're talking about here. All right, let's hold on to that question as we shift gears to our next case. One that hits a little closer to home. Okay, what have we got? This one takes us to the United States in 1948, just a few years after World War II. A time when people were already on edge about things in the sky. Definitely. In this story, it's a real tragedy. It involves Captain Thomas F. Mantell, a pilot with the Kentucky Air National Guard. What happens? Well, on January 7th, Mantell gets this report of a massive metallic object flying over Fort Knox. Fort Knox? They don't mess around there. Right, and this thing is moving incredibly fast. So they send Mantell to check it out. He and three other pilots are ordered to investigate. Talk about pressure. I mean, this guy flew missions during the war. Now he's facing something totally unknown. As they get closer to this object, the other pilots, they decide to turn back. But Mantell, he keeps going. Almost like he can't resist the mystery, right? He's got to see what it is. Maybe, but it ends in disaster. Mm -hmm. Mantell's plane crashes and he's killed. And the object it just vanishes. Now, the official explanation was that Mantell was chasing a weather balloon, a skyhook balloon to be exact. And that he lost control at high altitude. But a lot of people don't buy that, do they? There are tons of issues with that theory. Witnesses describe this object as way too big for a weather balloon. And way too fast. Right. And some even say they saw it maneuvering in ways a balloon just couldn't. Like it was under intelligent control. And then there's how the government handled it all. Yeah, that adds a whole other layer of suspicion. First, they deny knowing anything about the objects Mantell was chasing. Then they change their story and say, oh yeah, it was a skyhook balloon. Makes you wonder what they were trying to hide, right? Right. And it gets even more interesting when years later, documents released under the Freedom of Information Act reveal that the government had been keeping other UFO sightings around the same time under wraps. So was Mantell's death a tragic accident or was there something more to it? And if so, why all the secrecy? What else is hidden in those government archives? What could it tell us about what really happened that day? We've laid out the facts for you, and now it's up to you to decide what you believe. This one is a real head-scratcher. Absolutely. 
And as we move on to our final case for this deep dive, we're going to get even stranger, even more challenging to conventional thinking. Oh, I'm intrigued. Lay it on me. We're leaving the realm of flying saucers and entering the territory of, well, bizarre creature encounters. Creature encounters. Now that's a whole different ball game. This is a case that some might consider fringe, even within UFO lore. But it raises some really important questions about the nature of the unknown, wouldn't you say? I think so. Ooh. It's a Flatwoods monster sighting of 1952. Okay. I'm all ears. Let's transport ourselves to a small town in West Virginia called Flatwoods. Small town, big mystery, right? It's September 12th, hmm. and a group of boys are out playing when they see something incredible. What do they see? A bright object streaks across the sky and seems to crash on a nearby hill. So they go to check it out? Of course, curiosity gets the better of them. Imagine that, you're a kid, you see something like that, you gotta know what it is. They head towards this crash site, and as they get closer, this pungent, almost chemical odor fills the air. That's creepy. And then out of the darkness, they see this pulsating ball of fire. Okay, now I'm getting goosebumps. They're joined by a local woman named Kathleen May, and together they come face to face with something that defies explanation. This is where it gets really weird, right? Out of the shadows emerges this towering figure. Towering? How tall are we talking? Some say it was humanoid. Others say it looked more mechanical. Like a robot? Maybe but it has this glowing red face and these piercing eyes. The Flatwoods monster, I've heard of this. It's like something out of a nightmare. It becomes this local legend, this tale whispered around campfires. But there were multiple witnesses, right? Yeah, and while their descriptions vary a bit, some details are consistent. The height, the glowing face, this unsettling presence. And it definitely left an impact on them. They were terrified. Some experienced lasting psychological effects, even physical symptoms. It wasn't just a fleeting glimpse. This thing messed them up. It makes you wonder, what did they actually see? Was it some misidentified animal? A weird weather phenomenon? Or was it something truly otherworldly? Something we don't have a category for? And don't forget, this happened just a few years after Roswell. And in the middle of the Cold War. So was it connected to some secret government experiment? Or was it a genuine extraterrestrial creature? Despite investigations, no one has a definitive answer. The Flatwoods monster remains an enigma. Another puzzle piece that just doesn't fit. So we've got these three cases. The Tehran UFO, the Mantell incident, the Flatwoods monster. Three very different encounters. But they all challenge us to think differently about what might be out there. They make you question everything you thought you knew about the world. The Tehran incident. It suggests some advanced technology we can barely comprehend. The Mantell incident, it hints at the dangers of chasing the unknown. And the Flatwoods monster, it takes us into the realm of the truly bizarre. It's like each case is a layer on top of another, building this bigger picture of something we don't quite understand. Exactly. And that's what we'll be exploring further in our next part. I can't wait to see where this goes. We'll be back after a short break. Man, that Flatwoods monster, that one really gets you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a whole different kind of encounter. Makes you wonder what else might be lurking out there. It's like it taps into some primal fear we have of the unknown. Absolutely. And as we move into the final case for this deep dive, we're going to stick with that theme of the unknown, but we're going to shift gears a bit. Okay, I'm ready. Where are we headed? We're going back in time, back to 1976. Oh, wow. Back to the Tehran incident. This time we're going to look at it from a different angle. All right, I'm all ears. You see, the Tehran incident, it wasn't just a one-night event. There were multiple sightings over several nights. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that it started with those initial reports of strange lights. And it escalated each night, culminating in that incredible encounter with General Jafari and the citywide power outage. Right, right. So what are we focusing on this time? Well, one of the things that makes this case so compelling is the response of the Iranian Air Force. They didn't just dismiss it, did they? No, not at all. They took it very seriously. I mean, they scrambled jets multiple times. And these weren't just rookie pilots. Experienced pilots, trained observers. They were the best of the best. And they all reported seeing something truly extraordinary. And their descriptions, they weren't vague or inconsistent. They were detailed, specific, and they corroborated each other. So we're talking about a real tangible object here. Yeah, not just some fuzzy lights in the sky. This thing had structure, shape, 
It was a craft. And it was performing maneuvers that defied our understanding of physics. Like, it was operating under a completely different set of rules. Which brings us to one of the most fascinating aspects of this case. The apparent interaction between this UFO and our technology. You're talking about the instrument malfunctions. Exactly. When General Jafari got close to this UFO in his F-4 Phantom, his instruments went haywire. Communications down, radar glitching. It was like this thing was emitting some kind of energy that interfered with his plane systems. And then there's the power outage. A citywide blackout at the exact moment this UFO was hovering over Tehran. But hard to believe that's just a coincidence. Almost impossible, right? It suggests a level of technological sophistication that is... Well, it's mind-boggling. It's like they have the ability to manipulate electromagnetic fields or something. Or something even more advanced that we haven't even conceived of yet. Makes you wonder, what was their purpose? What were they trying to achieve? Was it a demonstration? A warning? Or maybe it was an accident. An unintentional side effect of their technology. We may never know for sure. But it's questions like these that keep us coming back to these cases, right? They challenge us to think beyond our current understanding of the world. They force us to expand our horizons and consider possibilities we might have never entertained before. And that's the beauty of exploring the unknown. It's a journey of discovery, a constant reminder that there's always more to learn, more to uncover. And who knows what other mysteries are waiting out there for us to find. I guess that's the fun part, isn't it? The not knowing, the constant pursuit of the truth. Exactly. And that's what we're all about here on The Deep Dive. So what's next on our agenda? I feel like we've covered some serious ground here. We have. It's amazing how these cases, they really get you thinking. They do, don't they? They challenge our perceptions, make us question what we thought we knew. So let's recap. We started with that incredible military encounter in Tehran. Radar confirmations, pilot testimonies, a whole city plunged into darkness. Then we delved into the tragic story of Captain Mantell. A pilot who lost his life pursuing something he couldn't explain. And finally, we journeyed into the realm of... The truly bizarre with the Flatwoods monster sighting. A creature encounter that still baffles researchers to this day. And throughout all of this, we've stuck to the facts. We haven't tried to push any particular agenda or theory. We've presented the evidence, the official reports, the eyewitness accounts. And we've encouraged you, our listeners, to draw your own conclusions. Because ultimately, the search for truth is a personal journey. It's about engaging with the information, weighing the possibilities, and coming to your own understanding. And sometimes the most important thing isn't finding definitive answers. It's about cultivating that sense of wonder, that curiosity that drives us to explore the unknown. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of UFO sightings, I hope you're left with more questions than answers. Because those questions, they're the fuel that keeps us searching, keeps us pushing the boundaries of what we think is possible. The universe is vast, and we've only just begun to scratch the surface of its mysteries. And who knows what other wonders are out there waiting to be discovered. Exactly. So keep looking up, keep questioning, and keep exploring. The truth is out there somewhere.